ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here, on the subject of the bankruptcy of cosmology, or the crisis in physics. Uh, David Harriman has an excellent course, The Crisis in Physics, Ayn Rand Institute, Volume 6 of the lecture series from 2003. In there, a questioner poses some problem about David Bohm's theory and says it wasn't made relativistic. You couldn't make it relativistic. And David Harriman, we're not concerned about that, but David Harriman says, the problem is uh, people today are trying to put together r relativity, Einstein's relativity which can't explain a lot of observations, like light. It doesn't know what to do with light. It doesn't have a non-contradictory description of light, because light doesn't have mass, except it does. Uh, and if you look at it and use it, look at it and measure it in certain ways, it doesn't have mass, and in other ways it becomes particleized and has particles. So it's, the, it's a wave and it's particles. What is it, then? So is it mass or is it energy? and uh, Einstein had no way to deal with this. So there's his theory. Then we've got quantum mechanics, which says we don't know why anything happens. In fact, our theory is that there's no reason for things that happen, but we're pretty sure that this will follow this, uh, and this will follow this, but we don't know why. And they're right almost every single time, because you have to just do these measurements billions and billions and billions and billions of interactions like the decaying of atoms and stuff and you know that it's going to reduce its radioactivity a certain amount and sure enough it does. Is there a cause for that? They say no. They say it's random. So that's quantum mechanics. So you got two asinine theories. Some people have made it their life's goal to unite these two ridiculous theories that have nothing to do with reality at the end of the day. Einstein himself said his theory did not refer to reality. It's, it's how we perceive reality. So, that's chapter one of our talk, split. Now, chapter two of our talk. There is a reason that Einstein's theory became so fashionable, in spite of its flaws and glaring incompleteness, and inability to explain a lot of stuff. His theory became fashionable at a time and in a place where it was fashionable to deride reality, to dismiss cause and effect, to uh, speak badly of rationality, uh, and to say that the law of identity and reality as such are bizarre concepts. This was a time period and a place undergoing like an orgasmic surge of Kantianism, an orgasmic surge of, of skepticism and irrationality. It was Germany, and Prussia, and Austria. It was Europe in the early 1900s. His relativity paper was published, I believe, in 1905. He publishes it in 1905. It becomes popular. Everyone loves it. It does not describe reality. It describes our perception of reality. It's called relativity theory, not objectivity theory. And its whole thing is what reality must appear like. So he figured out mathematically a lens through which we can get a lot of information about how things would look to us. And then scientists have gone on with that and said, well, if that's how things would look to us, then here's how things must be out there. And then we've gone out and found some of those things. Now, it, it's still got way more holes in it than, in, than in anything it explains. You know, observe the fact that it can't touch quantum mechanics, can't get anywhere down there. So, uh, it is not a complete theory by any means. It is a theory that says this is how things look to us. Why would that kind of a theory come about? It's crippled science for a century. Why? It has come about because it was popular at that time to say that everyone's perception creates reality. And his theory very much said this is the case. Our perception does create reality. The reality for you is such and such, but the reality from my perspective, because of light and blah, 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 so it was a scientific confirmation of Kantianism. Now, there's no 
coincidence that they shortly launched two world wars in that same area of the world and it later collapsed into communism and uh, starved for uh, 75 years. No coincidence. It is not coincidental that they were that highly irrational and that their society became a, uh, just a disaster in the future. With that having been said, those of the, the people who are totally convinced of modern cosmology and science, and they believe that science is objective, it has to be, right? The people who believe science comes first and philosophy is inferred from science have already left the room. The rest of us know that philosophy is a primary. I assume the people still watching know that philosophy is a primary. First of all, you have a philosophical idea. Then, you use that philosophical idea to investigate reality i.e. in order to make sense of the information coming from your senses. Your five senses take in information and you make sense of it in a certain way. Your philosophy determines how you make sense of that. You cannot go out in the world, observe things, experiment, do hypothesis, do further experiments, gather data, then come home and sit down and try to figure out your philosophy. <laughs> do you see how backwards it is? Do you see how backwards it is to go into quantum mechanics or into outer space and cosmology and get some thing, some idea like uh, space and time are relative and stuff like this, then to come backwards into philosophy and work with it? Do you see how backwards it is? Well, I, I was very distraught. I used to think this was all a very interesting field, and. Uh, I have books about it and stuff, I've got lots of documentaries and I've watched many more and rented movies and stuff on it. It's fascinating subjects, space and Stephen Hawking and, and uh, all of this. Good stuff I thought until a couple few years ago it came to my attention, Crisis in Physics and the attention the objectivists were giving it, that this is, there's no mistake that it sounds bizarre, it is bizarre. So I just sort of dropped off the thing for a while. Uh, I thought, uh, better tune out. Not, no, no use reading all these books that are just so many kinds of mysticism. And no use keeping up on the theory of what the latest explanation of dark matter is and stuff, because it's not an explanation, for example. Now, the other night, I just Googled dark matter. I, I just thought I had to clean my kitchen. You might see some boxes over here. This is all my kitchen stuff. This kitchen's being rebuilt, and I, I put a documentary on while I'm doing it. Just... I thought I haven't looked into physics lately. I wonder if there's any recent stuff. There's a TED Talks that I just gave one star to a couple hours ago. That's new. It's about dark matter, but they are behind, way behind. They, I mean, if you watch the video I'm about to recommend, and you watch the TED Talks video I gave one star to, I don't remember what it is, and it's inconsequential, so I won't worry. If you watch them both, the lady in the TED Talks thing She's just giving the audience our information about what we think dark matter is. She sounds like she is a century and a half behind. She sounds like an ass. You should go watch a video called Thunderbolts of the Gods. I found it on Google Video and Live Video, and uh, it's not on YouTube yet. Uh, there is something called Thunderbolts of the Gods, but it is not the one I'm talking about. It's an interview with the guy. The problem with it is it's discovered by this discovery was sort of made by these theories were formed by uh, this movement against cosmology is being brought by people who are not cosmologists they are not specialists in the field so this is like someone that has a year of college maybe drops out of college they've got, gone for one year they drop out of college and they write a book that reforms colleges okay that's what's going on here these guys who are mythologists and authors uh, and electrical engineers are kicking all of the cosmologists out of the room and saying nice try your turn is over you've kicked off causality and rationality and reason and and reality and cause and effect and you can leave the room now because you have failed and they've kicked them out so thunderbolts of the gods ten percent of the videos hash nonsense about uh, the mythology and stuff. I don't know, maybe it's meaningful, I don't know. I didn't spend enough time and I, I'm not motivated to look into it. What I'm interested in is these people have a theory that actually explains stuff that has totally and completely baffled 
uh, cosmologists. Like galaxies rotate. And they started taking pictures of galaxies and, and they